What's going on guys? Vic VB back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be talking about my Facebook Marketplace find. So you guys seen a couple of my past videos, you've seen a couple of my Facebook Marketplace finds. I was even thinking about making like a subcategory thing on my channel about Marketplace finds. Uh, you know, usually nightly, I do go on Facebook Marketplace, I do go on OfferUp, and I do go on Craigslist, and sometimes you'd be amazed at some of the stuff you can find, especially when it's arcade related or pinball related. That's what I personally search for every night. I look up arcade builds, pinball builds, and then once a week I look up mega touch builds. Now it's really cool that you do find some amazing deals. Like I'm gonna tell you about this right here. I personally would never have thought of me ever buying this, and I'll go into the details as to why I bought this. But let's just say that the deal on this was just too good to be true. Sometimes yes, you do find amazing deals, and then most of the time you do find outrageous or like unheard of prices when it comes to you know builds or arcades and all that. There are some people, and I do get it. Believe me, I do get it. The most common ones I do see on like uh, Facebook Marketplace are like Pac-Man machines and Pac-Man Galagas that are selling for like twenty-five hundred dollars. I understand the reason why it's that price but you know usually i do see them sitting there for i would say seven to eight months before somebody actually spends that i'm not gonna knock original arcade cabs i've in the past bought a lot of original arcade cabs and then changed it to multi caves which a lot of viewers don't like i get that i totally understand it but you know for me as a resale person not many people want to hear about crts dying and then you know recapping people don't want to hear it so yes I used to buy like in all honesty the most common one was a Street Fighter cabinet and I would convert those the last one I ever did a while back was a Tekken cabinet and then from there I never really did retrofitting anymore I have basically really focused on you know gaming solutions cabinets and now making my own cabinets now in all honesty if you've seen in my past videos this cabinet has been sitting in the back corner of my garage for two months now I bought this like in June um, and again, I do have, a, I'm going to tell you the whole story about this, but basically it's just, it's just been sitting in the corner, um, because I've been busy with the V pin build. And now that this is totally done and I'm getting ready to bring in the CNC machine, I figured, let me discuss details about this specific build right here. Um, but in all honesty, for me, I am not keeping this cabinet. So let me tell you real quick how it all started. One night I was on Facebook, it was in June. I was on Facebook marketplace and I saw this cabinet. You could just see, even in the picture, just me standing next to it, this cabinet is huge. In all honesty, when I looked at the picture, I thought it was a Monster Arcade cabinet. The company Monster Arcade, I thought it was that, just by the four player deck and the size of it. And uh, this was located, I went 80 miles out, which I, I usually have like my, my bar set to like 50 miles out. I went 80 on this one. So 80 miles out, located in Jersey, as you can see right now, hyperspin, PC, four player deck, trackball, dedicated four way spinner. It's even got these two crazy uh, double joystick things going on with the, the buns on top, kind of like a crane joystick. You would never believe how much I paid for this cabinet. This cabinet rocking a 43 inch TCL TV, I paid 750. Yes, 750. So yes, I know 750 is insane. Originally it was 500. The guy I put it up for 500, I messaged him. I said, I don't even need to see this thing turn on. I will give you the 500. He messaged back, he goes, I'm sorry, but I'm getting too many hits. Price went up to 750. I said, I will still take it for 750. Sure enough, he's like, okay, fine. We'll meet tomorrow. He been actually turning down other people. And I drove out 80 miles to Jersey to pick this thing up. I literally told the guy when I was driving, I was like, dude, I don't even care if the thing boots. I don't even care if it turns on. I don't care what issues you have with it. I will take it for that price. So sure enough, a really cool guy, I forgot his name, went to his house, he had this in his basement. It was actually like, um, luckily, it was very easy to take out. Um, I bought my dollies, I always bring dollies with me. I, we had to actually put it on its side, put the dollies on this side and then push it out the door. It was on a his like basement had like a, I don't know, maybe a six inch step, but it just barely made it through a doorway. That's how big this thing was. The control panel did come off, so he did tell me that. Um, but again, 
you know, I literally saw it. I saw the picture of it. I saw the size of it. And I said, listen, 750, I'll, you, you don't need to even show me how to work the system. I'm going to take it. So when I actually pulled up to his house, I guess he went through my Facebook seller profile and he's like, oh man, I see that you build arcade cabinets. And I was like, yeah, man, in all honesty, I am purchasing this to duplicate this. That is why I bought this, honestly. My plan was to measure this and duplicate it with the new CNC machine coming up. I want to duplicate this. I've seen what these go for, especially like on Monster Arcade. And you know, in all honesty with me, yes, I want to make my own personal kind of build and my own personal unique cabinet, but it doesn't hurt honestly to take dimensions and measure it out and try to duplicate it, especially with the CNC that I have coming, might as well use it as like a template, as a test run on it. So again, just try to keep in mind as far as me as a reseller, right? 750, I'm telling you right now, this control panel alone, the buttons, the spinner, the trackball, the joysticks, the other joystick with this crane game type button, you're looking easily right now at $300, just in like buttons. Again, trackballs usually go for about 150 bucks. Spinners, I believe are about 100 bucks. You got four IL um, joysticks, figure 25 bucks each. You're already at 100 bucks just in joysticks. So again, I'm pretty sure in, I'm hoping that in your mind and in your shoes, you can understand why 750 is just an unreal deal. He did mention to me that it's running a 43 inch TV. So I was like, 43 inch, damn. I've never personally seen a 43 inch build in person. Again, I went into his basement. I saw it, it was powered off. I said, dude, you don't even have to power it on. I do not care. So he said, let me just power it on just to show you and all that. So he did power it on. This is running a really old Windows. I think it's Windows 7 or 8. It's got like the tiles and I'm gonna reload it because I'm gonna secretly show you the company that built this cabinet. And I gotta say this cabinet is pretty damn heavy because whoever built this cabinet used one inch wood on this. This thing is heavy. I actually unloaded it off my truck alone, which I think I honestly kind of pulled something in my thumb when I did it. But I, I kind of took a rule and I was like, dude, the team holding on this is massive. And sure enough, the whole cabinet is built with one inch and it looks like particle board uh, with melamine though. It does have black on it. So it looks like it's a black melamine particle board style. Mind blowing. So again, I went into this guy's basement, saw it just like this, right? I saw it just as, I can't tell if you can tell in the picture, right? This guy said that he bought it for his kids like five years ago. Uh, and he said that he spent about $5,500 on this cabinet. And I was like, whoa, um, I do understand the price point on it. And then again, I'm trying to remember that, you know, it is a couple of years back, but I can't tell if you can tell in the, pic in the, in the camera right now, but there was one thing that I noticed. And again, try to think that this cabinet right now is about five years old, right? I don't know if you could tell, but I'm doing this live on the camera. Dude, this still has the, <laughs> this still has the plexi plastic cover on it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I saw that a mile away and I just literally did it in front of you guys just to see it. This might look better now. I, I, dude, that was the first thing I saw. I was like, why is the, why is it so faded? And sure enough, I, right when I bought it home, I took the corner and I was like, wow, the protective coating on this is still on the Plexi. So whoever made the cabinet, I guess, never took off the Plexi coating. Oh, well, it does look better now. <laughs> so I'll take you guys in. I'll show you what this looks like on the inside because the wiring on this is, whoa. I personally never did an iPad build before, but this, does, this is using an iPad. I'm right now gonna launch the computer. I have to literally open up the control panel and press the power button on the computer for it to start. Um, I'm gonna show you how exactly this turns on. It's not really um, convenient. Uh, let's just see right now. Why is my TV not on? That's another thing I kinda don't like about it, especially now with these TCLs. Um, TCLs don't, power on by themselves like a Samsung would. So I do have to open up the panel and I do have to press the power button on the remote, okay? 
This is what it loads up to. And like I said, I'm not gonna say the company, but if you look very carefully, somewhere on the screen, you will see the company name. And basically, uh, I believe this was Windows 7 or Windows 8. Um, and again, it had this tile thing. So I have to use now the dedicated four-way has the mouse buttons here. Like zero effort for this. There's not even like, a, I mean, me personally, I would just do a black background just for the hell of it. I didn't even honestly go into the computer aspect, like my computer. I didn't even see how big the hard drive is. But basically, he just has a hyperspin thing here. He did say that sometimes there's an audio thing, like an audio. Sometimes the audio doesn't work on the boot. So he did add a shortcut here. And basically, I believe it's the registry editor. It's the services menu. You have to scroll down and then go to Windows Audio and turn it off and then turn it on. He did tell me that. And I was like, dude, I don't care. Um, but basically, I'm going to double tap hyperspin. And big thing is that it does have LED blinky, or I should say LED whiz. It, the program is LED blinky. And I guess something happened. Um, as you can see, only player two and four are live and the trackball and not players one and three. Um, but I literally, like I said, this has been sitting in the corner for two months. I just just turn this thing on like i just booted it i even like while i was you know recording like hyperspin meaning like you know the track mode doesn't even initiate but this is a sad hyperspin build not to not to really downgrade people but this is sad you got meme you got capcom which is basically a category within meme neo geo daphne zinc dice the nintendo this is the player choice Atari, so you got the three Ataris, you got the NES, the Super Nintendo, the Master System, the Genesis, 32X. You have Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, the Game Gear, Coleco, Neo Geo Pi, Lix, C64, so Commodore 64, Pop Cap, and that is it. Uh, I've been doing Hyperspin now for like, I would say it's, it's, gotta, it's gotta be at least eight years. And like, the game selection on this. That's why I'm also gonna see how big the terabyte, the hard drive is on this. I get it's an old computer, but dude, like not even regular Game Boy, you could have at least done like the, maybe the DS. Uh, I'm not a fan of it. Not to mention even regular um, arcade stuff like the Sega Model 2. Um, very surprised that it's not there. So I'm gonna go into main and there's one thing I went right away to, and I wanted to play The Simpsons, right? So I'm gonna load up The Simpsons, so it should be under T. And obviously The Simpsons is a four player game and a two player game, right? So here's the thing when it comes to like hyperspin, like my personal, I do have its own four player, um, you know, choice on the main menu. And then I have, you know, all main. So if you look carefully here, this says The Simpsons, this says The Simpsons. One of them is the four player, one of them is the two player. So for you to only see it is to press button one. Um, he doesn't have the screen stretched. And this was kind of like, once I saw this, I was like, I'm not even gonna go any further. So I don't know if you can see on the LED blinky, but there might be actually a grounding issue. This worked before, actually, let's see. So if I do credit, Player one is Marge, right? Player two Homer. is Homer. Player three, oh, is Bart, okay. And four, so this is actually good. I launched this before I started recording and it had like Marge here and Homer here and Lisa here and like, I, I, I don't remember, but that actually worked. Let me bring it down real quick. Let's go to the two player one. Looks like it might be a grounding thing actually when it comes to the LED blinky and the LEDs. Uh, in all honesty, I would have to launch a game and then these worked. So I can take a look before I sell it off. I'll be able to definitely check it out. Okay, so this is fine now. Let me go back to four player. LED blinky goes. See, this one's coming back. Oh, no, it stopped. That one just went off like just now. Let's see. Bart. Bart. Oh, good. 
Okay, might have been a fluke. I've, like I said, I, I, it was kind of, it wasn't in the right area. The, the, like, it wasn't right. Player, player one was player three. It wasn't right. Um, but again, at least it did have like your main arcade classics. Um, the person that sold it to me, he was like, yo, I posted this thing on like Facebook and um, people were like messaging me does it play this? Does it play that? And the guy was like, I don't, I don't have time to look. Um, one of the biggest ones that he did tell me was, I believe it was Gauntlet, Gauntlet Legends, which I did try to launch. This one, the uh, Gauntlet Dark Legacy. If I press button one on this, I said, that one works. This is, this goes in and out. But right now, this Gauntlet game is not going to run. So, I, again, I don't know the creators of this. I don't know whose hard drive they're using or whatever. But not all the games ran. I'm going to just... Get, oh, this that's fine now. Okay, cool. Before, I'm telling you, before I, start, I started, I couldn't even exit. It was very odd. Um... Let's do this real quick. Let's take a look with you guys live with me. Let's take a look at what we got as far as the computer specs on this. I'm going to take you inside. This is running like, a, it's less than a Dell Optiplex. This is a Dell, I don't even know what kind it is. Um, it's crazy because it has an HDMI input, no graphics card. It does have HDMI, but whoever built this is doing the, um, oh, the, the PC connector. Like your, uh, your VGA. It's like VGA to VGA on the TCL. I'm like, you have HDMI, I don't get it. This is running a 500 gig, it's not even full. This is a 400 gig hard drive. It looks like an, let's see what he's got here. This is the C drive stuff. He doesn't even have hyperspin stuff on this. Let's go back. So he's got running on this a 400 gig boot. This is Dell stuff. It's a 400 gig hyperspin drive. Install, look, it's got even like a, man. It's got a little blinky, let's go real quick. I mean, me personally, I use rocket launcher. Let's see, he doesn't even have rocket launcher on this. He must still be using like, I guess hyper launch, media settings, hyper theme. Like that, I mean, listen, for that price, for you to charge $5,500 for 400 gigs, oh my God. This dude got, it. I mean, you know, luckily the kids enjoyed it. MAMUI 32. Like I said, like for me, I'm planning to just sell this the way it is. I could get a Dell Optiplex. I could put it in. He's even got PC games. Oh, it's Popcat. He's got House of the Dead 3 as a, um, an AHK file. Nah, this is all Popcat Windows games. Bastion. He's got stuff here, but these are all shortcuts. This must be like this guy probably has bigger hard drives and only sold this guy a 400 gig hard drive. That's insane. I never heard of 400 gigs. That's ugh. Oh man. I haven't ran Windows 8 in so long. It took me like 10 minutes just to get this. Look at this. It's running a Windows 8 Pentium. Not even like a quad. It's an in. It's it's a Pentium CPU, four gigs of RAM, no GPU. Wow, this is just, <laughs> look at how I have the keyboard out here. There's literally the keyboard that comes out. This is, oh man, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of ashamed, honestly, to even resell it. Um, I, maybe I could fix it. I do not know. Let's, let me show you guys the inside of this real quick. You can see. All right, so take a look at the inside. This is what was unique is that the control panel comes off. It's being held by these two deadbolts. So pretty unique design. Again, my plan is to duplicate this. My, I'm, I'm, 
that is my plan. When I get the CNC here, I'm duplicating this design. I'll measure it out a lot. But again, let's take a look at the control panel here. This right here, I mean, it is fairly clean wiring, but this company soldered each line. Each line is soldered. Even like the LEDs are soldered. So if this button ever breaks the micro switch, you would need a soldering iron. Um, again, you got the ILs, you got the ILs. These were very unique. This is what really caught my eye. These two crane type joysticks with the button. And this is this communicates with player one apparently, but I'm trying to figure out what game uses that. I don't know. And then I came back here and I'm like, how is this even wired? Because there's a micro switch here. This definitely is like probably daisy chain. See, like you would have to literally, I have to follow this wire. Like that's where I have to go. And then it goes into the iPad here. There's the wiring on this is just insane. But the worst thing I saw was that he literally soldered all the connections on this. That is, I've, I've never seen that before. Um, you got the track, well, you got the spinner, the spinner, the customer uh, who I bought it from, the silver piece wasn't even tight. It wouldn't even spin freely. Spinners are supposed to spin like that. That thing is still spinning. Like that's supposed to spin for days. And he didn't have it tightened. So luckily I had an Allen key and it was like, I would spin it and then it would stop. And you can actually see it's moving the mouse. But yes, the spinner is a pretty nice thing. The trackball is pretty nice. You can just kind of see how this is. He's got the remote. Take a look real quick. You got the LED whiz here. So basically again, every one of these is going to the buttons of each individual button. That's where I think there's probably either a negative grounding issue going towards player one and player three, which I'll take a look real quick. Hopefully it's quick, but uh, again, it's on a nice hinge. That's really what caught my eye too. You could see again, look at, look at the size of that. That is one inch. That's one inch. And again, you could see here, it's like a millimeter with like this particle board stuff. So here he's got like this USB extender thing. Again, he's got trackball, spinner, and then the iPack, I guess. No, the trackball and the spinner go into the iPack and then basically it's just the iPacks and I guess the LED whiz. So one, two, and three. Yes, three USB, so it's one, two, and three. I personally have never used an iPack and I'm thinking about it, especially when I wanna get into four players. But I've been always doing just regular USB encoders four times. I always do my Zen modes as player one and two. And then I put two USB encoders like the Dragon Edge or the Dragon Rise ones. That's what I usually do. Um, take a look at the computer here. So again, it's a, it's a Dell Inspiron. Not even a Dell Optiplex, a Dell Inspiron. Um, you have to open up the panel and press the button to start it up. He does have speakers. I think it's like a very cheap Logitech here. So volume rocker here. I saw the two speaker girls here, but if you guys take a look at the back, it is, see like that just made a clicking noise. What was that? I probably shouldn't put the keyboard here. Let's put the keyboard there. We'll tuck it down there. Now, if I take you guys to the back of this, it is just like, bear <laughs> it is bear the other thing i saw here was i saw these three right i was like oh shit this guy's got three sound like subwoofers up here not subwoofers but like audio amps up here no negative these are actually fans pc fans now look at this he's got three pc fans wired down to an actual pc set power supply this big power supply is just for the fans the, nothing nothing else is connected to this absolutely nothing nothing that's just this big thing is just for the pc fans up above which i don't even think you need um he's got like this kind of power strip block thing going on because he does have like the speakers here you could see he's even got this double edged taped on uh i don't even know what the, it's a logitech an l ls21 again like it's just it is a lot of cabinet empty cabinet it is a lot and basically uh, what always intrigues me is that how these are put together so this is using battens and it's just stapled 
And that's what I'm hoping to do with my CNC machine, honestly, is to start using my air compressor gun and start doing these battens or batons, whatever you want to pronounce it. But even like the TV mount was very unique because it's kind of got like this sliding TV mount. It just kind of slides in. And you can see here, like the TV mount is, this is, this is stapled in. These are all stapled in. Again, you see the PC here, very small. I'll probably swap it out. If I don't sell it quick enough, I'll swap it out. But this is, look at this. The computer has an HDMI port, but you chose the VGA or the DVI or whatever it is. And it's right here. It literally goes DVI to this, it's VGA. It goes VGA to the TCL. You have HDMI, my guy. <laughs> Use the HDMI. Mind boggling. There is so much. There's so much here. And again, you can just see how thick. Look at the thickness. It's one inch. Look, look at the back door. The back door just simply being held by two screws, but it, it does have like this. No, did it? No, it's just two screws. It's got like this double. This is now two inches. <laughs> I guess this is like, you know, you screw it into here. I, this is what like boggled my mind because again, it is using melamine. It's just heavy. I was like, why is this heavy? And sure enough, it's one inch. It's massive. It is a big cabinet. The biggest thing that I that caught my eye is luckily it's on casters. Like it's on four nice swivel casters, which I do like the design of this, which I will definitely duplicate. But damn, this is a monster cabinet. Okay, so after quick, like just a quick look, as you can see, I found the issue. It is the escape key. It looks like... That's it. <laughs> That's insane. It is, it's even soldered. And it basically just, I guess, oh man, if I show you guys, it's not even worth it. But basically he has the daisy chain wire. It's still the plastic is touching the, the if the plastic's touching the metal, it, does, it didn't make contact. I just bent it, and now we have the LED. The LED whiz now should work. Now it should work accordingly. Let's launch real quick. Just do a random one with the ghost and ghouls. No, like look. See, like I press button one. Is it gonna load? I don't know what. I don't know what's happening. Oh, okay, I didn't press it. So the LED like blinky is a nice feature. It's pretty cool it's for one player game. You can see here it, it is, I could use either this one or the dedicated four way. It's cool. I mean, I don't know if it's really worth, you gotta pay me a lot to wire each button because that is not easy. It's not an easy thing to do, but at least I got the LEDs to work. Um, I honestly wanted to see what game is gonna use, see he's, that's gotta be, so this is mapped, but not even the controller is mapped to it though. Hmm. He's got this, the button up top is the, is button one. I wonder if I like load up like Galaga. I wonder if Galaga will work like with this. I know Galaga is supposed to be, I know, I know. <laughs> but let's just see if it'll work with this. But this is not, this isn't going left and right. He doesn't have this map to left and right. So it does fire. You guys are probably gonna be roasting me, but check this out real quick that I was also looking at, right? Oh, I'm on player four. I'm gonna go real quick. Let's just go to like the turtles. Let's load up the turtles. So, who knows if it's the four player one. It looks like I loaded up the four player one. I think this is mapped to the to player three. Let's see real quick. What the hell happened to the video on this? I'm sorry, it, it just, it, it it frustrates me. That that fr 
That's just, it, you know, it's like somebody paid $5,500 for this. I mean, me personally, I would, I would expand it. I'm gonna load up. I just, I think, like I said, before I was shooting, this is gonna control, I think, player three. Look, I'm controlling player three. And this is player two. This is control player four. Yes, why? Why, what is that? There must be a game that I'm missing. Probably like a shooting game. Like almost like Star Wars kind of. But that's... Lord. I never really seen an LED blinky like live. I never seen the LED wind like this. So when I am going through the games, it is, there's no video on this. It is like changing. It's, it's a cool feature, but uh, you know what? Let's load up real quick. Let's see how Golden T launches. I would love to see if he has Simpsons bowling. Imagine a Golden T, okay. Let's do golden tea. Let's see. <laughs> Trackball is nice. It does, it is, it's nice. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice, pretty smooth. You gotta like really like, I'm not really into golf. Uh, let me try real quick. Um, I do wanna try Capcom Bowling. I used to love that. We had that at my old job. I would be on it all day. And then you used to get like the Boulder Dash guy come out. Was, yes, that's, yes. Right, let's see. So at least like, I want to say I'm I'm kind of far out just for the video purposes, but nice. I, I mean, I like the trackball definitely. My brother used to spin it or hook it. Nice. That's fine. Let's give it one last test, and we're gonna call it a day. But does this have Simpsons bowling? I didn't press the S. Let's see if the guy ever went in and like um, fix like the memory thing. Cause usually you do have to go in, I believe it's like F1 or F5 to get this game to start. So let's see. So no, this guy never went in and did what he had to do to make the Simpsons work. And now, if you know MAME and you know Simpsons Bowling, you know what you gotta do to get to this screen here. It's just, it's, it's crazy. Um, you know, you pay this much and it wasn't tested. It's, how oh, that annoys me. Real quick, quick note about artwork on this. It's kind of funny. Let me just bring you back real quick. I don't know how far I am. Now, when I met the guy in Jersey, the guy's wife came down and he's like, oh, did you tell him how we got the name Just One More Level Arcade? And she was like, oh, when the kids were younger, um, it would be time to eat, but they were playing the arcade. And they would always say, just one more game, just one more game. And that's just how that name came about. Um, the artwork on this is, it's, I don't know what it's printed on. Um, even like the marquee, it's not, it's, it's not glass. It's like, I don't know, it's like a textured type of vinyl that's not a vinyl. Um, I don't know, it is it's it is pretty nice. I can't tell what print or what type of you know paper it's on. It almost looks like it's like, it was printed on this, like the printer passed on top of this. 
it's pretty nice. It's at least it's kind of like a generic artwork where I should be able to just resell it. Um, again, just seeing how this is, maybe, maybe I'll swap out and I'll put an, an Optiplex in it. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I personally just never did an eye pack, so I know I'm gonna have to sit and like kind of program. Look at this now. The Simpsons will work. How crazy is that? I'd be so pissed. <laughs> Again, the trackball is beautiful. Like, the spinner too is, is beautiful. Honestly, even with the audio of the speakers, he didn't even decase. He actually just has like the regular Logitech housing just taped up there. Oh shit. <laughs> Ooh. Not bad. But like, I that was the first game I thought it was like Simpsons Bowling with the trackball. Um, I would love to find out what game it uses player three and player four with button one to fire. I that that one right there, that stumped me. Um, but there you guys have it, $750 Facebook Marketplace find, I'll be brutally honest, the way it is right now, I would sell it for $2,000. Um, I already have it up on Facebook Marketplace for two grand. as is, where is, how is. Um, part of me does want to put in like an Optiplex or you know maybe fix it up, put a new computer in it. I don't know, but me personally, again, I already measured out everything. I took all the measurements that I needed, took measurements of this, so I'm ready for the CNC. But me personally, when it comes to a control panel, player one and player two has to have a button layout, um, especially with the PC games that I would put into it. So this, unfortunately, six button layout, it's, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna work out for me. I would definitely wanna put eight buttons, players one and player two. But on that note, VigVP Game Case Arcades, I'll let you know if I flip it.